uh, something that happened this past week that that really uh, shook mm. many communities um, across uh, across ASEAN and Southeast Asia, and that was the execution in Myanmar of four pro-democracy um, individuals, including mm. uh, a former pro-democracy lawmaker, a prominent activist. Um, and it is the first time, the first use of the death penalty in over three decades in Myanmar. Uh, just a shocking moment for that country since the coup uh, happened by the military junta. Uh, we know about the people that have been arrested and jailed and, and tortured and, and so much, so many things have been happening that are so horrible. But this is the latest uh, in that very sad, sad story. Let's bring on two uh, very, very uh, knowledgeable Myanmar watchers. First is So Mint, and so is the editor-in-chief of Mizima Media Group uh, in Myanmar. And also our good friend Dr. Felix Tan, a political observer at Nanyang Technological University, who has just uh, released a new book on Myanmar. Uh, welcome to you both. Uh, we're sorry to have you on with this particular occasion, but we're certainly glad to have your knowledge and expertise. Uh, so Mint and Felix, welcome today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, Thank you. Yeah. So, so Mint, let's start with you. And when you first heard the news of these uh, of these four executions, what what went through your mind? I, just, uh, I didn't. Uh, it didn't get surprised me. Um, when they got arrested, uh, and like, uh, uh, oh, okay, uh, they are gone. Uh, that was, um, of course, uh, uh, there were attempts uh, to not to uh, get them uh, killed and executed, uh, particularly uh, including uh, the requests uh, uh, through coming through ASEAN, but. Um, uh, the, uh, the regime uh, didn't listen uh, and didn't heed uh, to the pressure, internet pressure as well. So uh, they went ahead uh, with the ex executions. So it was not ex uh, uh, unexpected. But uh, I am surprised that uh, they uh, dare not to... Uh, we're so mint is just frozen there. Hopefully he'll come back in a second. So we'll just jump over to Dr. Felix Tan, uh, mm -hmm. waiting for so mint to come back. I mean, Dr. Tan, let, a bit of perspective for our listeners out there. Since the coup last year, 1st of February, they said the military junta said they would be in charge for one year. It's been 18 months now. They're still in power. Almost 12,000 people are in detention more than 2000 have been killed including the four this week hard not to be pessimistic dr tan what is your overall perspective on where we are right now in myanmar thank you so much i think it's rather unfortunate but you know uh while a lot of us try to be positive about the situation there but unfortunately under the military rule it will be quite a stretch uh very often and over the, the, the many years that they have been in control, uh, they, have, they have refused to listen to the international community, they have refused to listen to ASEAN, and they have just functioned on their own. So I think, you know, moving forward, it'll be quite difficult for um, the people in, in Myanmar to so-called overthrow the, the military junta. They do have yeah. a lot of resources with them as well. And I think this latest incident that we have seen there uh, clearly demonstrate what they are capable of doing. And they will continue with that sort of atrocities because they are being, I, I wouldn't say they're allowed to do so, but they, they realize that there's no political will from ASEAN, no political will from the international community to do anything to them. So they can just walk away scot-free. And I think that's yeah. a rather unfortunate situation that we have in Myanmar. Uh, and it's going to be difficult for the people. Felix, uh, your, your new book, uh, Myanmar's Fragmented Democracy, uh, talks about the coup, talks about the, the uh, Union Solidarity and Development uh, Party and, and internal uh, levers of power. Are there any internal levers of opposition power that have a chance of breaking through or overcoming the junta at this point? 
I think at this point, it would be very difficult. In fact, I think if you look through uh, Myanmar history, when I've written in the book as well, it's the opposition collectively is in a disarray. Uh, there is no mm. one particular strong opposition group or groups that are able to stand on its own. I mean, the, 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 the biggest we can see right now is the NLD. And by arresting Aung San Suu Kyi, I think that kind of uh, uh, leave the NLD in you know, hanging. And there's a lot of, uh, there will be difficulties for them to rise up to the occasion again. Uh, and all the other groups, I mean, uh, you have the ethnic groups uh, around. You have, uh, uh, they, they are vying for power. I, I think we have to understand there are some huge uh, influential ethnic groups uh, uh, in, in Myanmar. And uh, they might have a stronger stand. They might come up uh, uh, with, with, with some ideas. But I think uh, at this point in time, it will be very difficult. They are very disparate, and there is no one particular group that can rise up against a strong, uh, uh, you know, government like the military junta. Yeah. Uh, so, I Mint, mean, you're back with us now. Let's stay with the domestic. We'll look at the international in a moment. I mean, I'm reading about this patchwork of militia forces in Myanmar, known as the People's Defense Forces, the PDFs. This is the Gen Z, so brave, the Gen Z protesters, Glenn, they're escaping into the jungle, they're receiving training, they're trying to fight back these with the help of armed ethnic groups. They've carried out effective guerrilla attacks on the military and the police, but this takes time i mean is, is this something that you're hopeful about can they bring about change or will it take too long how much help do they need in the last 18 months i have seen uh, first of all uh, immediately after coup uh, they uh, particularly the youth uh, they uh, uh, took undertook peaceful protests as you have seen and the world have seen uh, uh, for weeks and then the military as expected they came down very heavily and brutally and inhumanly, and they didn't have choice. Uh, so they decided to defend and take up armed struggle. Uh, what I have seen in the last 18 months is in, uh, when they started uh, uh, to take up armed struggle, they didn't have any weapons. Uh, some of mm. them even started with uh, uh, like uh, 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 improvised uh, mm. weapons, which didn't work even in the beginning if you really look at that then they improvised they started uh, manufacturing by themselves uh, by using the uh, the telecom tower that they did they 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 they, they, do, they, they sort of uh, destroy so uh, they started using and improvising the uh, arms and weapons and now uh, i'm very surprised uh, that they have uh, got weapons they have got uh, arms and ammunition. Largely, uh, they, they do it by themselves. Of course, uh, some, uh, some of them, they are also getting uh, from the ethnic uh, armed groups. So we, have, we are seeing the a proper a national uh, armed struggle taking place, uh, which is joined by the ethnic armed groups. If you look at the uh, current national union, if you look at the uh, mm. Kachin uh, uh, independence army, army the and and currently uh, army they all are joining with these uh, young uh, who were civilians and students uh, of course uh, the, the armed uh, resistance groups groups the national unity government claims that uh, it is about 80000 to 100000 people pdf uh, uh, in the country even if we can see as like a conservative number uh, 60000 it is a lot, and mm. uh, we are seeing, and they, and many of them, uh, for the first time in decades, are very strong in Bahman central areas. Uh, if you look at Zagai region, Magui mm. region, Zagai region particularly. By the way, we are even missing is also uh, able to open a, a office in Zagai region uh, because mm. it is liberated, quote and go liberated, not mm. under the control of the regime anymore. Wow. Interesting. We're talking with So Mint, the editor-in-chief of Mizima Media Group in Myanmar, and Dr. Felix Tan, political observer at Nanyang Technological University. And So Mint, let's uh, just stay with you for just a moment on that, uh, the point, the internal rebellion. Uh, we have seen over the past year the, the, the brutal uh, crackdown on civilians, women, children, um, and also on the media as well, uh, you know, 
more than a thousand people are still in in jails as we as we believe although the numbers aren't exact um, what is the state of being able to get information to people around Myanmar inside Myanmar that is not coming from the government are people still using Facebook I know that used to be a, a big channel uh, for internal uh, kind of uh, news dissemination um, with the journalists more journalists being uh, being uh, put in jail how, how are people getting their news and information about the state of the coup yes uh, they are getting the people are getting uh, the information the people are taking getting out the information so it is both ways so working uh, properly, uh, of course, uh, with all this risk and dan uh, danger uh, to their life, uh, the military regime uh, is now, uh, with the assistance from Russia and China particularly, uh, they are able to even have uh, equipment uh, uh, set up in remote townships, uh, not only in Yangon and Nebido, a uh, place like there, uh, they are able to scan the mobile uh, of anyone. Mm -hmm. that that is what they are able to do now. So basically, they ask the mobile and scan. They have an equipment to scan the memory of the mobile and then check Facebook or Messenger or all these applications uh, to see uh, anything against uh, the regime is written or communicated. So that is that is even for the citizens, normal citizens or uh, anyone uh, uh, is facing. Particularly for the journalists and uh, uh, citizen journalists, uh, the, the danger is more. Uh, for Mizima, for example, we have been charged with many charges. I don't even remember how many charges. That can uh, put them, put us in life, at least in life, at least, I will say. Uh, wow. So uh, that is the for danger. For life, life, in, life in prison, you're saying? Life in prison, life in prison, yeah. at least, at least. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, uh, we have... Uh, uh, we have 140 people working in the organization. About 100 are in the country, in the areas under the control by the regime. So that's what the, the risks are there. But there are also challenges, like, for example, the military uh, regime shut down the Internet in certain areas. Oh. Whenever they go offensive to a particular area, the, the, the first thing, one of the first things they did was shut down the Internet. Then how, how about the information getting and getting out, receiving and getting out? So we have to, we have uh, now show web radio, FM radio. By the way, we also have uh, set up FM radio in certain areas mm. so that, that people without the internet can have access to information. Of course, television channels are also there, access to information. So basically, we have to use any means so that the people uh, have access to information and the people uh, and uh, the reporters and journalists also can get the information. Of course, very dangerous, very dangerous. One is also sources. Uh, we have seen more and more sources, uh, citizen journalists, people sending reports, because they don't, they want us, they want us to transmit this, uh, to, uh, to share this information to others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tan, listening to So Mint there's astonishing account of bravery, journalists, citizen journalists doing all they can to get the information out despite internet blockdowns, shutdowns, using short and long wave radio, astonishing. You're listening to the Gen Z protesters going into the mm -hmm. jungle, forming parts of this people's defense forces. We're seeing across the country astonishing acts of bravery to try to push back against the, the junta there. But at some point, when does the international community aid, add support? On Monday, the U.S. called on China. Of course, China is Myanmar's most powerful ally to act, to rein in the, the junta there. China repeated its usual oh. approach that it does not interfere in other, interfere in other countries' affairs. What does China, what does the U.S., what does the rest of Southeast Asia, perhaps, what do we do here? You're hearing all these brave stories from So Mint internally. What does the rest of the world need to do? I think at this point in time, there is no clear solutions. I, uh, once, I mean, the, the U.S. and its allies have already imposed sanctions on certain military leaders, families, and, of course, their cronies. And that might work to a certain extent, but that also, if, if there is economic sanction on the country, that's not going to be good because the people will suffer. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, with regards to China, I think they have made their stand very, very clear. Uh, they are not interested in getting involved in domestic uh, affairs, and they have stood by that. Uh, but we have to also understand that China has certain interests in Myanmar, and they are building a pipeline across into the Rakhine region as well. So there are they are trying to uh, ensure that businesses continues as per normal for them. So it's going to be a, a, a caught between a rock and a hard place for China to get involved because they do have some interests in Myanmar. Uh, also, the, the, the Myanmar military have accused China of backing some of the Shan separatist uh, movements in the Shan state. And mm. you know, at this point in time, there's it's going to be a difficult situation where China will just say that oh, we're not involved, we're not backing them, but the military can accuse them. So it's a dicey situation because that's the border area. Mm. I, uh, as for regards with, with ASEAN, um, again, I, I mentioned political will. Uh, they can issue statements. Uh, there have been talks uh, within ASEAN itself that they would love to expel, suspend perhaps Myanmar from the organization. But, you know, moving forward, that will not be a feasible move. Because eventually and essentially, what it needs to do is to engage with Myanmar. But I think what it needs to do is to mm. have a stronger willpower to sit down with the Myanmar military together, perhaps with the NUG. And I think the NUG, collaborating with the NUG in this particular situation might resolve or come to a compromise to resolve the problem in Myanmar. But right now, as it stands, the military junta is stubborn, and so is the NUG. Yeah. Both doesn't mm. want to talk to each other. So, you know, with, even if ASEAN tries to mitigate the situation and say, let's sit down and talk, none of them want to sit at the same table to talk and discuss and resolve the problem. Um, mm. You know, and so these are the three, uh, three you know, organizations that are involved and you need to hold them together. Uh, as for the rest Fe of the international Felix, community... So, sorry, Felix, I just want to ask, you know, in, in your, in your uh, excellent new book, uh, Myanmar's Fragmented Democracy, you know, you, you, you track over, let's say, the past 20 years, uh, the democracy movement uh, and the NLD, etc. Is, is it even worth talking about the democracy movement in Myanmar right now? I mean, it's, it's dead, isn't it? I mean, it's dead in the water for all intents and purposes um, based on what the junta is doing right now. Is, is, there any, is there any hope that that process is going to be revived anytime soon? Do you see uh, that's happening? a good question. I, I think uh, revive, perhaps, probably not. And you're rightly so to say that democracy is dead in Myanmar. It's flat out gone. All right. But what the military junta uh, might or at least uh, uh, you know, what they might intend to do is something similar to what we see in Thailand, where you have a pseudo kind of military uh, 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 regime in power. And then so what happens is that you will have certain uh, military men uh, relinquishing their role in the military, running for government, uh, mm. perhaps, you know, in that kind of situation. And then, of course, the elections will probably be rigged, they will probably win, and they'll get into power. So if, you know, if yeah. they intend to do that, that is a path that they might choose to take. Uh, that is similar mm. to Thailand. But, you know, uh, otherwise they'll continue with their uh, control. And they have done so in, in the past and for, so, mm. for, 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 for a very long time. And so they'll continue with their style of so-called governance uh, in Myanmar. So, I mean, you're there on the ground in Myanmar. How do you see it possibly playing out? What do you possibly see the, uh, the junta doing moving forward? Uh, I, I have been uh, in this uh, situation for the last more than 30 years. Personally, I've seen many of these. And uh, in my opinion, the military regime is falling apart. Why I'm saying is there are many indicators. There are many things happening on the ground and in reality. First of all, the economy of the country is collapsing. First of all, it's collapsing. And they don't have uh, foreign currency enough, and uh, particularly U.S. dollar. And uh, they are, uh, at the, we are, we don't, please don't get surprised. We should not get surprised when uh, they, uh, they declare what uh, the Sri Lanka uh, did uh, in terms hmm. of economic implosion. That is first. Secondly, uh, secondly um, the military regime, particularly May Online, 
By the way, he is a kind of a psychopath. Even if I don't say he's a psychopath, he's a kind of a psychopath surrounded by fascist and fundamentalist. And he is talking about acquiring nuclear technology in his last recent trip to Russia. The, the last time Myanmar military talk about nuclear or attempted nuclear technology was in two, before 2010 uh, with the, through uh, North Korea. Now he's talking. Why he's all, all this talking? Because he, well, he, 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 it is at the last lack of the uh, uh, attempts or the, the tenure. So, and, and also uh, in terms of people, because uh, for them to rule, they have to administer. They have to administer the country. They cannot administer uh, uh, for, uh, in the last 18 months or 17 months. And they will not be able to administer every day bombings, killings. Fightings are taking place if you monitor the Burmese media because unfortunately many of these may not have come out in English language or internationally. So that is so. In my opinion, the regime is falling apart. It is we just uh, have to know uh, what will be the regime uh, next after regime. That is a big question. And when the, that the regime will fall apart, that is the question. Yeah, that is a huge question, and of course, sometimes uh, uh, the the question is the devil you know is somebody you understand, but what comes next if you don't know who who might who that might be? Uh, we do have to leave it there. Uh, so Mint, uh, editor in chief of Mizima Media Group, and Dr. Felix Tan, political observer, Nanyang Technological University, and the author of Myanmar's Fragmented Democracy. Thanks to you both for being with us. We'll have you on again uh, as we uh, see the situation progress. But thank you. Thank you.